Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X researcher and professional physicist. And today I'd like to talk to you about another one of my articles. This one is entitled Estimating Planet X's Position. And in 2016, there were two magnetopause reversals, one on April 23rd and another on October 14th. And in an article that I wrote in October of 2016, I used these two reversals to calculate the position of a star, uh, possibly um, a brown dwarf star, that was likely to cause these reversals. And that calculation yielded a position of 6.9 AU, or between Jupiter and Saturn. Now, this object must produce a very strong magnetic field, as well as possibly its own stellar wind, in order to produce such reversals, and must therefore be a star. Now, it could be Planet X, Nemesis, or one of the many brown dwarf stars that keep coming towards the Sun, and clustering in the Sun's corona. But the old brown dwarf stars that are, cr that are clustering in the Sun's corona are usually too weak to produce a solar wind as they approach the sun and can only do so that is produce a solar wind and behave much like um, main sequence stars once they have been near the sun in the sun's corona for a while and drawn enough energy from the sun to calc to uh, rejuvenate and nemesis uh, according to historical record seems to stay out of the inner solar system so the most likely candidate would be Planet X. And Planet X, according to historical records as well, is able to still emit dark red light and therefore can uh, possibly produce its own stellar wind and um, maybe a lot stronger than uh, some of these stars that are coming in towards the sun. So. Um, However, it is enveloped in gaseous plasma, and from these historical records, we know that it ionizes it and produces two tails. So it must have gone through some aging process um, that sort perhaps go through the red giant phase, which is when stars um, let go of the outer material and lose it, and it becomes a diffuse cloud around um, the inner core of the star, possibly with um, just a small ionizing envelope. So this star may be close to being a brown dwarf star, uh, but it is still able to emit uh, radiation, and brown dwarf stars usually only able to um, emit infrared radiation. And this star um, is emitting some visible light still, so it may still have some life left in it. And so, it, this is possibly the star that is causing these reversals. But this is fortunate because then we may be able to uh, estimate where it is. And so, we see the magnetopause reversal from October 14, 2016. And as you can see, there's no sign of the bow shock here. Uh, the sun would be on this side, the arrows indicate the direction of the solar wind, and it should all be away from the sun, but on the night side, uh, on Earth's night side, on outside Earth's orbit, they point in the opposite direction. This indicates a reversal, and it could be either because the star is on this side, or because uh, there is an alignment between the Earth the sun and the star, which may possibly be on the other side of the sun. And then we had another reversal on March 14, 2017. Most of the data was uh, deleted at that time, but uh, it was still quartz, and this is one of the few images we have indicating that um, the bow shock folded up, the magneto um, magnetopause um, just um, collapsed. And this is possibly because of a solar wind, um, a stellar wind produced by another star. 
And so this event was quite dramatic, as the image uh, shows. And we also know that because uh, most of the data was, refer uh, was deleted. And that usually only happens if there's something that um, the powers that be would like to hide. So, um, so we, we still have evidence, though. Now, if this object is indeed planet X, it is part of the solar system, and we would be able to model its orbit with the gravitational force, like all other objects in the solar system, and use Kepler's law to estimate its position. Now, this does not mean that the gravitational force is the force causing planets to move in the way they do. Um, I have discovered through studying the many old stars in the sun's corona that the gravitational force does not act between massive objects like we would expect. It's possibly just a good way of modeling orbits, but it's definitely not the interacting force between um, material between matter and that has been shown and there is overwhelming evidence through the observation of the objects in the Sun's corona that are sometimes a lot larger than the Sun uh, they are solid they have to be more massive than the Sun if, if we could think of a mass in the way we have until now but yet they do not go into a fast orbit around each other. They do not collide with each other in ways that you would expect if uh, the gravitational force was the force that was causing them to interact. So they seem to interact uh, due to a magnetic inter, uh, force. Now uh, here we see um, the position uh, of the Earth on October 14th, 2016. So this is when the first magneto pulse reversal occurred uh, that we are going to use. And then the last one on March 14th, 2017. And if, and this would be the brown dwarf star, uh, I've placed it in alignment um, on October 14th on the other side of the sun and with the Earth between the Sun and the star on March 14, 2017, when the reversal seems to have been more dramatic. But um, now, if the star had moved in a straight line or it had stayed in the same position, the Earth would have had to move all the way around until it reached this point. And so, uh, that would have taken the year for 182.5 days. But the time interval between October 14, 2016 and March 14, 2017 is 151 days. So that's less than 182.5 days. So uh, we must have an angle here that's less than 182 degrees. And um, and we can use that time difference to calculate how much the star moved, um, how much closer it is to the sun. Okay, so it must have moved from there to there. It didn't just move radially. It must have curved in, my, uh, in order to have an orbit around the sun. So it curved in towards the sun. So if the brown dwarf star was coming in towards the sun in a straight line, its angular position would not change. Um, and it would have taken six months or exactly 182.5 days. But the fact that the time period between reversals is shortening shows that the object is not coming in towards the sun in a straight line, but that is traje its trajectory is curving in order for it to go around the sun. So. Uh, the two reversals I used in 2016 um, had a time interval um, of 173 days and now only 151 days. So obviously the star must be closer to the sun in order to move um, clo uh, in order to move to meet the Earth at the two positions. So we're going to use this difference. So it now uh, there's a difference of 122 days, so that's 173 minus 151 days. So it took uh, less time to meet uh, the Earth and cause uh, the next reversal. 
Now, uh, we can also see where uh, the object is on March 14, 2017, if indeed it was in alignment with the Sun and the Earth. We can actually find the constellation that it was in and uh, the solar system scope image here. And so on March 14, 2017, if we draw a line from the center of the Sun through the center of the Earth, the line points to a position somewhere between Virgo and Leo. And this would then be where the star uh, would be, somewhere between Virgo and Leo at that time. So, um, again, if, if the brown dwarf star had not moved from its position, then we would expect um, the alignments to be um, in uh, 182.5 days. So the time difference between the two alignments would be exactly six months. But um, they are not, it's 151 days. So this means that the object's position changed by an angle equivalent to 32.5 days of the Earth's orbit. And that angle can be expressed, first of all, as a fraction, so 32.5 days divided by 365 days. And then to place it in radians, we multiply by 2 pi, and we get 0.5595 radians. So that's the angular displacement. And then from the angular displacement, we can calculate an angular speed uh, by just dividing by the time interval of 151 days. And then we can uh, find the period, which is 2 pi over the angular speed, and we have 100, um, sorry, 1.696 times 10 to the 3 days. And then if we change units to seconds, we obtain 8.55 times 10 to the 7 seconds. Then once we have the period, we can use the very useful Kepler's third law to estimate um, the orbital distance. And that will be given by A, which is equal to the cube root or, or cube root of gm over 4 pi squared times t squared, where g is the gravitational constant, uh, m is the sun's mass, um, and t is the period. And in kilometers, this would have been uh, 2.91 times 10 to the 8 kilometers. And in astronomical units, it's 1.9 AU. And remember, one astronomical unit is the distance between the Sun and the Earth. And the last calculation yielded 6.9 AU. And now we have 1.9 AU. The difference is 5 AU. So that means that this object has moved 5 AU closer to the Sun since October 2016. And also at 1.9 AU, it's just outside Mars orbit because Mars orbit is 1.5 AU. And in conclusion, if the same star coming in towards the Sun was causing the observed magnetopause reversals, then its position was likely to be 1.9 AU from the Sun on March 14, 2017. And if this object is planet X, and since this object is not supposed to get any closer than the asteroid belt, it is likely that the object reached perihelion in March of 2017. But if the object is some other star coming in towards the Sun, or if Planet X happens to come closer to the Sun than the historical records reveal, it may continue moving toward the Sun, and at the current speed it would cross Earth's orbit in another 58 days, or around the middle of May 2017, which would mean that it is now in the inner solar system. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.